I'm Chris Aline, and welcome to my Bohemian Kitchen. We got a real funky, colorful, fresh show for you today. All right, well, I'm gonna be cooking three dishes for you. We're gonna start out with the first one. That's gonna be a New England clam chowder. Second off the bat, we've got a very light, lunchy kind of a main course. Macadamia nut encrusted chicken breast with mango salsa. And last off, snapper carpaccio with watermelon vinaigrette and rucola greens. My hunt for the freshest ingredients takes me to Mapsa Fruit Market. All kinds of different colors, all kinds of beautiful fruits, all kinds of unbelievable aromas. Look at that beautiful ripe papaya we have here and these lovely two mangoes. I live in Goa and spend part of the year in Ibiza, Spain. Experimental and passionate cooking really turns me on. It's every cook's dream to have his own restaurant. Sublime's my baby. Join me for some wild cooking. Let's start with our New England clam chowder. This is chowder, so it's kind of a soup, but a hearty soup. Really thick, really filling, and it's from the area of New England, okay? Right off the bat, we've got our clams right here in the bowl. I'm gonna drop them in hot water that I've sort of heated a little bit. Just drop them in there. Now, once the clams start cooking, they die, they open up, and they release this clam juice, the clam liquid, into the water. So now that that's going, let's go ahead and start chopping up a few vegetables for this chowder. We got some carrot right over here, a little bit of celery. Let's put all this into action. What I'm gonna do is I just wanna have kind of a rough chop of these carrots. Nothing too fancy, just a rough chop. There we go. A Little bit of celery. I'm gonna get rid of these leaves and just use sort of the end bit. All right, moving right along. We're gonna be flying through the soup, okay guys? So pay good attention. Onion, next up to bat. Straight down, basic sort of small dice is good enough. Doesn't need to be anything crazy or anything fancy or anything like that, okay? Small little rough dice we got going here. We have a lot of shellfish in Goa, a lot of seafood. People like it a lot. A Little bit of garlic clove, just to throw out there. You see what's happening over here? You've got this water sort of boiling. The color of the water is kind of changing and becoming almost a little bit milky. And these clams are slowly starting to open. Okay, now we're gonna get our soup bowl or some kind of a sauce pot together. Get this burner on. A Little bit of olive oil, a bit of butter. Once that starts heating up, we're gonna add all of our ingredients at the same time into this mix. I think the only thing left I have to chop is some potato. I've peeled some already here ahead of time. I'm gonna use one of these guys, okay? Just a rough chop. Okay, that's about enough potato here. Our butter and our oil mixture is heated up here. Let's go ahead and add all our ingredients inside. Lovely colors. Add a little bit of salt and pepper now. A Little bit of pepper. All right. A little shot of um, white wine. Not very much, just a bit. All right. Got that in there. Burn off the alcohol a little bit. All right. I'm gonna take some of this clam water that we've been sort of cooking the clams in and add some of that to our mix. Okay, and we're gonna be reducing that now a little bit further until our potatoes are cooked. Soup here is cooking with the wine and the clam juice. We've got some more clams here that are open. I'm gonna go ahead and take the slotted spoon and spoon these guys on out of here. Bring it to my cutting board. And then let's remove this meat that's inside. This is the meat that we want. We're gonna add this to the mix. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of cream. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. All we need to do is just plate it all up now and we're good to go. We got this beautiful 
soup plate over here. Ah, actually there is one more little piece that we do need to do, which we haven't done yet, and that's the crouton for this dish. So for that, I'm gonna take a little saute pan, small little mini one, this is just gonna take a second. Let's get the fire on, a little bit of olive oil, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna, just a little bit sort of interesting, I might even chop a tiny little bit of garlic and make like a mini little garlic bread with this crouton slice. Add the garlic in here, into the olive oil. Take our bread, mix it up nicely, and we're gonna toast one side of this bread. We're almost done with one side. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and ladle this soup into the bowl. Oh, yeah. And this is what I mean. I mean, look at all these potatoes carrot, celery, onion in the bottom of this bowl. This is a full-on lunch right here. That's what a chowder is. It's hearty and it's filling. All right, we have croutons done as well. Beautiful. There we go. And I think lastly, just a little bit of sort of chopped parsley, give it a little bit of fresh color. We're in business. All right. Clam chowder, really thick, really filling. Let's give it a shot. Mmm, yummy. Potatoes, carrots, everything cooked perfectly. A little bit more clams would have been nice, but six, seven of these guys is probably good enough for one person. Wonderful. New England clam chowder with garlic bread croutons. Ah, these look nice. All right, here we are, Mopsa Fruit Market. Okay, there's all kinds of tropical fruits here. I'm always very, very happy to come here because look at the color. Green, red, yellow, blue, purple. All kinds of different colors, all kinds of beautiful fruits, all kinds of unbelievable aromas. Acha, we've got some mangoes here. Very nice. One papaya, one mango. Maybe I take two mangoes, one papaya. Yeah? Look at that beautiful ripe papaya we have here and these lovely two mangoes. I'm sure we can think of something to use this for. Thank you very much, bye. Welcome back. We've got something really nice. We're gonna be doing a macadamia encrusted chicken breast with a tropical fruit, mango and papaya salsa. Let's get going, okay? Let's start it off. First thing first, we're gonna make a macadamia crust, okay, for our chicken. We'll need a blender, okay? In that blender, we're gonna put a couple of macadamia nuts, okay? A Little bit of breadcrumbs. All right. Tiny little bit of flour, not very much, just a really little bit. A Little bit of salt. A Little bit of crushed pepper. All right, this is gonna be, this is gonna form your nut base. Now, the most important thing is we don't really wanna kinda make a fine powder out of this. We wanna keep it a little bit chunky. So I wouldn't sort of put it on number one, two, or three, or anything like that. I'm gonna pulse it. Okay? That's our beautiful crust right there. It's as easy as that. I'm gonna show you what's called the standard burning procedure. This is our sort of macadamia crust. I'm gonna put this sort of on the end over there. First is gonna be flour. Second is gonna be egg. Whole egg is just fine. All we're gonna do is just beat that up a little bit. All right. Next thing up is the star of this particular dish is our chicken breast. It's a lovely specimen of chicken breast over there. And lastly, we're gonna need a frying pan. to fry the whole thing up, get a little color on it. With just a fine little bit of salt, a little bit of crushed pepper. All right, chicken goes into the flour first. Now while we're doing that at the same time, I'm gonna get my pan going. So by the time I'm done with all this, 
I can just get it right into the pan and start frying. Olive oil from flour into the egg mixture and from egg mixture into your nut mixture. I'm gonna coat this nicely, get these macadamia nuts all over it. I think our oil's hot. Put the chicken in there. All right, so we're kind of cooking our chicken here. Keep an eye on it. I'd probably grab a fork or something like this and every now and then kind of lift it up and see how the nuts are doing, okay? I think what we'll need is um, a baking dish. We do want to bake this in the oven. This is quite a fat piece of chicken and unless it's cut in half and two pieces are there, it's not going to be able to finish off in the frying pan, okay? So you will need to put it in the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and put it in the baking dish. All right. Now while that's cooking in those seven or eight minutes, we're gonna make a tropical fruit salsa. For that, we'll need a mixing bowl and some tropical fruit. I think mango and papaya. All right. We're gonna cut these up. I'm gonna use half of this mango right here. All right, got mango here chopped. A Little bit of papaya. This is gonna be a nice sort of bright orange color here. Say maybe one tomato we can throw in there, half an onion. Salsa wouldn't be a salsa without tomato and onion. If you notice, none of these chops I'm doing are actually exact, precise chops, because it's a salsa. It doesn't need to be perfect squares or perfect circles or whatever. It's a salsa, you know? Green is missing big time, okay? I'm gonna take some of this beautiful coriander, maybe even a little bit of green chili. Okay, the green chili, of course, is what's gonna spice the whole thing up. Salsa means spicy. A little bit of green chili. Some coriander. I'd probably even put a little bit of sort of fresh mint. And I know mint doesn't usually go in a salsa, but I think mint is gonna sort of add a different dimension to the whole thing. All right, tiny little bit of cumin. That's very sort of Mexican style. And lastly, but not least, lime. So I'm gonna give two big squeezes of lime in here. There is one more thing, and that's these beautiful little green onions here we have. That's gonna give it also some color, but more importantly, a very subtle kind of onion taste, okay? There you go. All right, give it a nice little mix. See what this looks like. Almost all the colors of the rainbow. Maybe a tiny little bit of salt and a little bit of crushed pepper. See how she's doing? All right. Let's take this bad boy out of here. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Then grab a plate. And let's get to it. All I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna sort of cut this on a bias, on an angle. So cut it really gently with a sharp knife. All right? And all you need to get this salsa on the top, just gonna bring it so much more to life, this dish with fruits, nuts, citrus flavors, and chicken, all combined in one. What I'm gonna grab is some chili oil that I prepared a little earlier, just like this. A Couple of drops chili oil, okay? And a little bit of crushed pepper for some color, all right? And that's your macadamia nut and crusted chicken breast. 
with mango, papaya, tropical fruit salsa. All right, bon appetit, enjoy. Let's give it a shot. All right, do you see this? Come over here and check this out. This chicken is still very, very, very juicy, all right? That's good. Mmm. Nutty, fruity, little hint of cumin. In there, the lime is also very subtle. Nothing's really intensely knocking you out. All right, now for the last dish of the day, we're gonna do something that I know is a kind of a touchy dish, and all you guys are probably thinking, carpaccio, carpaccio, oh no, what is he gonna do, what is he gonna do? I hope it's not really raw meat or raw seafood. Yes, it is. Snapper carpaccio with watermelon vinaigrette, a mixed salad, and crispy, crispy crostinis. Moving right along, the first thing we're gonna do is a watermelon vinaigrette, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and grab this watermelon right here. Let's get going. Little piece of watermelon out. Okay. That might just be enough. Let's take a look. I'm gonna go get a mixing bowl. All right. I'm gonna spoon out this watermelon from here. Really, really juicy. It's all that juiciness. You see that? That's what we want to capture, okay? That's gonna be all part of our vinaigrette. Breaking it down into kind of smaller pieces. Ideally, you want to try and remove as many seeds as you can, and you don't want to have sort of watermelon seeds swimming all over the place. Next into this, we're going to add a little bit of rock salt, a little bit of white wine vinegar. That's going to give it a kind of a little bit of a, a little sour tart, tartness to it, okay? Olive oil, very, very important. One of the main ingredients in any carpaccio is olive oil. I'm going to add a little bit of pepper into this as well. Okay, mix that up. So we got our watermelon vinaigrette on the side. Now it's a fresh piece of fish that we're using here. And what I've done is I've put it into the deep freezer to kind of harden it up a little bit because it's almost impossible to cut very, very, very thin, thin strips of fish unless it's hard. I'm gonna grab the plate to plate this dish, and as I'm slicing, I'm gonna sort of lay the strips of fish onto the plate. Got this beautiful sort of off-white plate over here. You wanna try and keep it as absolutely thin as you possibly can, okay? I think that should probably do it. I'm gonna gently kind of place these ice pieces of fish like so around the plate beautifully. We serve about 20 to 25 of these fish carpaccios every day in my restaurant. Now before I start putting the vinaigrette on, I'm gonna cut up a few things. Green onion. Onion is gonna add a very, very different sort of raw, sweet kind of a, a taste to this dish. Okay, we're gonna add a few cherry tomatoes. What's a salad without tomatoes? I'm just gonna even quarter these, kind of make it very, very, very subtle, very, very minimal. The freshness of the fish is of utmost importance in a dish like this, okay? I'm gonna use sort of the hearts of this salad. You see these hearts right here? Beautiful, fresh, young lettuce leaves, absolutely gorgeous. One of my most favorite salads of all, rucola. Okay, we're gonna incorporate some of these sort of lettuce leaves into this whole mix as well. I think what we can do next is toast some bread for our crostini. We'll need a frying pan. We'll get this burner on right here. A Little bit of olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna cut up this baguette. So to get three pieces of baguette to add to this. These can be really very, very thin. Get these pieces of baguette in here. We're gonna take this sort of little bouquet of lettuce that we have here, I'm gonna drop that right in the center of this. And lastly, we're gonna add our watermelon vinaigrette. 
which we have sort of prepared so carefully towards the outside. We've also got a few more two finishing touches to this dish that's really going to make this dish what it is. We've got some lump fish eggs, lump fish roe, okay? But these little black specks sort of on here, I think have a really cool, funky look on the dish. And some toasted sesame seeds, which make a huge difference to the dish. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of add these beautiful crostinis that we have here, toasted so nicely in brown. All right, a little bit of crushed pepper. All right, and here you have it. We've got snapper carpaccio with watermelon vinaigrette, mixed salad, and crispy, crispy crostinis. Let's see what it tastes like. One of these croutons, a little bit of fish, a little bit of egg roe. Mm. Very soft, soft fish. The eggs, the salad, everything together. You've got crispy, soft, all these different elements of watermelon and fruit and fish and the nuttiness of the rucola greens. All in all, it's a really, really nice dish. I think it looks beautiful and it tastes pretty damn good as well. Let me recap all these dishes for you real quick, what I cooked for you today. We started first out with a New England clam chowder, absolutely delicious. Next, we moved on to one of the most phenomenal dishes of all, macadamia nut encrusted chicken breast with a tropical mango papaya fruit salsa. And lastly, we have this red snapper here with a lovely red sort of citrusy watermelon vinaigrette, a little bit of rucola greens and some delicious crostinis. Today's lesson really, I think more importantly than anything else is be fearless with your food, okay? Cook what you wanna cook and eat what you wanna eat. Don't be afraid, you know? Your body is always a little bit tougher than a lot of people think, okay? It's important to push your boundaries, to experiment, to eat things you never had before. That's what life's all about, all right? Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you guys around hopefully very, very, very soon, okay? Adios.